Apple just announced the dates for their Worldwide Developer Conference. It's going to begin on Monday, June 10th, which means we're just a little over two months away from the official unveiling of iOS 18. Internally, Apple's senior management team is calling this their most ambitious and compelling update ever. So in this video, I'm going to go over everything we can expect to be announced in iOS 18, but when it comes to how some of these features will work or what exactly they'll look like, that still remains to be seen. And honestly, that's what makes WWDC my favorite event of the year. It's all about developers, 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 developers. It's all about software. With other hardware-focused events, we almost always know what the devices are going to look like well in advance. Take the iPhone 14 Pro, for example. We knew the notch was going away, and it was going to be replaced by a pill-shaped cutout for the True Depth camera with a separate cutout for the selfie camera. What we didn't know was they were designing a software feature around it called Dynamic Island. That was the surprise. And this year's WWDC looks like it's going to be full of them. So let's start with one of the first major features we can expect to see, and that's a brand new design. It seems like this is a rumor almost every year, but the last time this happened was over a decade ago with iOS 7. This was a major departure from the skeuomorphic design that had been around since the first iPhone. And while there hasn't been a major overhaul since, Apple has continuously refined the design, and there's no denying that the flat UI of today looks a lot better than where we started. But is that all about to change again with iOS 18? Not exactly, but maybe. According to a rumor from the Verifier, iOS 18 will be adopting some design cues from Vision OS. This would mean bringing more translucency, blurs, depth and shadows into the UI, but not a total overhaul. And personally, I like this idea. Vision OS already looks very similar to the existing operating systems, but having a consistent design language across all of them makes sense. Some rumors are even suggesting we'll get the circular app icons, which I'm not sure how I feel about. Hopefully this is something we can toggle on or off. However, we've actually already seen the beginnings of this design change in tvOS. The latest update brought a translucent navigation bar to the Apple TV app, including circular icons for all your apps and channels. We can probably expect to see this style on the iPhone and iPad this year, with other rumors suggesting it'll take another year before it comes to the Mac. Now, I ran a poll on my channel today asking what rumored iOS 18 feature you were most excited for, and I was surprised to see new design got over 60%. This is actually the feature I'm least excited about. I, I'm still excited for it, but if it's just a Vision OS coat of paint, it's not really a big deal. It would bring a fresh new look to the iPhone without making a bunch of users freak out about how different their iPhone looks, but that's what some of us want. And so I think what would actually be cool is to get more personalization options. And luckily, according to some recent reports, that is coming to the home screen, including the ability to finally be able to put an icon wherever you want. Android has had this forever, and Apple, you're not making the user experience any easier by requiring apps get sorted by the top left corner of the screen to the bottom right. Especially with how big phones are getting these days, we should be able to put icons at the bottom of the screen. But beyond that, what I would really like to see here is themes and app icon packs. You've likely already seen examples of this on iPhone, but they all require creating tedious amounts of shortcuts and taking screenshots and messing with widgets. And when you open an app, the shortcuts app opens and I don't like it. So I'm hoping Apple is aware of all these examples out there and know their users want this and come up with a solution that makes it easier for everyone. That's the kind of design overhaul I want to see. One where it's up to each individual user to decide how their phone looks and feels. And they've already shown they're capable of this with their contact posters and lock screen customizations, but now we need it for the home screen. And one last real quick thing about the lock screen, can we please change these buttons? So many people with the action button on the new 15 Pros are using it to open the camera, making this button useless. But not only that, are we all forgetting we can just swipe over on the lock screen to get to the camera? This is too many camera shortcuts. So that's my final personalization request. Make those programmable. Okay, and now on to what I think will be the biggest announcement coming out of this year's event, and that's Apple finally entering the AI arena. Microsoft, Google, Samsung, Amazon, Meta, they've all been talking nonstop about their AI solutions, and Apple has so far remained quiet, but that doesn't mean they haven't been hard at work behind the scenes. This strategy is very common for Apple. They're rarely the first to do something, but when they finally do do it, they're typically regarded as best in class. According to one leaker, Apple has been prioritizing on-device AI instead of the cloud-based solutions most of their competitors are using. This means that the large language models and machine learning all take place and are stored locally on the device, which results in a faster, more personalized, and more secure AI computing experience. So what will these experiences look like? Well, a lot of evidence is pointing towards a completely revamped Siri. And now I don't want to set off everyone's devices, so from here on out, whenever I say I'll replace it with 
So first up, I just want to say I actually like but that's because I know its limitations. I use it every day to set reminders and timers and send text messages, but I also know anything beyond that and all I'm going to get is I found this on the web. So I fully admit was already well behind its digital assistant competitors, but with the launch of conversational AI assistants like ChatGBT and Google's Gemini, it's time for an upgrade. Thankfully, rumors are suggesting Apple plans to make the ultimate virtual assistant and their most powerful AI application is rumored to have improved natural conversational speaking abilities. It'll have much better user personalization, and this will be carried over across devices, meaning you may be able to continue conversations from one device to another. There will also be deep integration of into apps in the entire operating system. Take the Shortcuts app, for example. There's a lot of amazing things you can do with it, but it requires you to go in and manually set a lot of these things up. Well, now, you might be able to do that for you, all off of a single voice command. Some other examples include the Messages app, allowing Siri to suggest full responses and answers to complex questions, auto-generated Apple Music playlists based off of certain inputs you give it, like your mood, AI assistance and productivity apps like Pages and Kino. Developers will also be able to better integrate Siri into their own apps. And there's even some AI assistance rumored to be coming to Xcode to help developers write code. All these AI improvements coming to Siri are also rumored to be coming to Spotlight Search, making it easy for you to get the answers you're looking for however you want to. Now, don't get too excited though. There are some rumors suggesting the on-device AI is gonna require new hardware, and the iPhone 16s are rumored to be getting significantly upgraded neural engines, which means some of these features may not be announced until later in the year and may be exclusive to the iPhone 16. Another thing to note is that when it comes to generative AI, meaning the ability to create images and write essays based off of a single prompt, Apple's own framework for that might not actually be ready yet. That's why you may have seen stories recently about how Apple's trying to license Google's Gemini service. So there's a possibility we see some sort of hybrid here with some Apple on-device AI features and some third-party cloud-based features. In fact, some of these features may not be free either. Rumors are suggesting some of these features may require a subscription or may be tied into Apple's existing subscription services. For example, Apple's Fitness Plus service could gain an AI virtual coach to help create a personalized health and fitness plan for you. But a lot remains to be seen here. So I've got one more feature I want to talk to you about, but already this is shaping up to be one of the biggest updates ever. A new design, more personalization options, AI features, improved safety. If there's something else you're hoping to see, let me know down below in a comment. And if you've been enjoying this video, please consider liking it or subscribing to the channel. It really means a lot. Okay, so the final major feature that is all but confirmed to be coming in iOS 18 is RCS messaging. This is a feature I've wanted for a long time. I love my iPhone, I love iMessage, but the experience of texting Android users, here in the United States at least, where you're not convincing anyone to download separate messaging apps, has been painful. If you're unfamiliar, RCS stands for Rich Communication Services, and it's been designed to replace SMS and MMS. These messaging services have been around since the original iPhone, but they have several limitations and are largely being discontinued with the rise of new messaging services like iMessage, WhatsApp, and Telegram. So iMessage won't be going anywhere for iPhone to iPhone conversations, but RCS will make iPhone to Android conversations much, much better. Messages will be more secure, there'll be typing indicators, read receipts, emoji reactions, and most importantly, higher resolution videos, images, and audio messages can now be shared. There's also support for better group chats, including the ability to leave a conversation or change the group name. There's also a slight chance Apple limits some of these RCS functions, but I'm really hoping they don't. Especially now since the Department of Justice is suing them for anti-competitive practices, they may not want to take any chances here. So, I'm super excited to see what Apple has in store for us this year. But until then, if you want to see the one iOS feature that, for me, makes iPhone better than Android, check that out next. I'm Nick Bradley. Thank you so much for watching.